أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما تفعلوا من خير فإن الله به عليم صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah سبحانه وتعالى We glorify him and we thank him for all his blessings and favors upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadallah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran that whatever we do, in life, whether it is good or evil, it does not go unnoticed because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is aware of everything. Allah tells us in the Quran, وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ and whatever you do with regards to good, whatever good thing you do, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is aware of it. Again, He says in the Quran, وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يَعْلَمُهُمُ اللَّهِ And whatever good you do, Allah has full knowledge of it. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, the mere fact of coming here for Salatul Jummah today with the type of weather that we are experiencing, it's an extraordinary good thing. There are times when we are exempted from congregational prayers. There are times when we can join our prayers even though we are not traveling. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did such things as a way of teaching his companions inclement weather so that people would not have to go back and forth. He joined between two prayers. And so, Making this extra effort to be here for Salatul Jum'ah today, it is a good thing and it does not go unrecognized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, today I thought of, let us look at ways in which we can be engaged in the doing of good.
sometimes we feel as whatever we are doing, it is all that can be done. But as we explore and we look at the sayings of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we tend to realize that there are so many ways in which our actions can be regarded as good and can be regarded as very as being charitable. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was asked, Ya Rasulullah, Ayyu A'mal Afdal. O Prophet of Allah, which deeds are the best? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al Imanu Billah Wal Jihadu Fi Sabilihi. To believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the first thing he said with regards to the deeds that are considered most preferred in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is saying that al-iman, having faith, in demonstrating that faith, it is of uh, the greatest of deeds. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also said, Wal jihadu fi sabilihi, and struggling in the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, making sacrifices, engaging in uh, showing that what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given unto you given unto each and every one of us that it is being used as a source of benefit for us and benefit for others. Struggling in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to better our lives, in order to make sure that uh, the nafs of ourselves are being purified. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا Successful indeed are the ones who purify themselves. And purification does not come by just sitting back. It comes by making sure that we, we struggle. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is saying, this is part of, uh, or, or one of the most preferred, uh, preferred deeds, the afdal deed, is to struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that struggling, sacrificing in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it, it, it requires sacrifice or struggle with everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given unto us. And so there is a means of us purifying our wealth, purifying ourselves, and, and that, is, that happens through the struggle and the striving that we do in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he, he taught his companions to, to make sure that life is lived in accordance with the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he constantly reminded them not to transgress, that Allah has set boundaries. If you transgress, if you overstep the boundaries, then you are creating that state of impurity. You become impure. When you stay in line and you do not transgress, you are maintaining the purity, the, the, the tahara, or, or you're, you're, you're making sure that the nafs, yourselves, ourselves, it is being purified and it is 
it is that which will make us successful in the world hereafter. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was always encouraging his companions, find ways, find methods of engaging in good things. And this will help you to be saved from the fire of hell. He said to his companions, the Prophet wasallam said, لا تحرقن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طليق The Prophet وسلم, wanted his companions to understand that every good thing that you do it has some significance no matter how small it is. And so he said to them, do not look at every, every small thing that you do as being insignificant. Even if you smile with your brother, it is significant because it is a, it is a charitable act it is something good that you have done. And so, always have that smiling face. Bring joy to people. Bring happiness to people. Bring comfort to them. That is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Bashiru wala tunafiru. Make sure that you are a bearer of glad tidings. It's good. Bring good things to people. Bashiru, bring tidings of goodness. Walatuna firu, do not engage them in, in things that are considered hatred and enmity and malice, dislike. Because from the time you start talking about those things, you, you bring the morale of the individual down. From the time you start engaging in, in, in negativity, people start to be uncomfortable, unhappy. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, you want your deeds to be significant, let it be good deeds. Even if you're smiling at your brother, it is considered charity, sadaqah, with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said to his companions, لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا يَتَقَلَّبُ فِي الْجَنَّةِ فِي شَجَرَةٍ قَطَعَهَا مِنْ ظَهْرِ الطَّرِيقِ كَانَتْ تُؤَذِّي الْمُسْلِمِينَ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I, I see a man strolling in Jannah, in paradise. And why is he strolling in paradise? Because he cut down a tree that was a sort of inconvenience to the Muslims. In, in another narration, it is said that he cut off branches from the tree that was presenting some inconvenience to the Muslims. And so the Prophet Sallallahu is saying, it may seem insignificant. It may seem as if it has no value. 
but the little things that we do can pave the little good things that we do can pave our way towards paradise. And, and, and so we are being encouraged constantly to be engaged in the doing of good things. How many neighbors could not remove the snow from their homes or in front of their doorways? How many people were struggling and they needed help? And there are so many who went to their aid and assisted them. And so these are, are good things. School would not have been open today, especially private schools, if some were not there to make sure that the snow was removed so children can walk safely into their compound, into their school classrooms. And so the reward is tremendous. This is what Allah and his Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reminding us about. That find different ways of engaging in doing good things. Kullu ma'roofin sadaqa. This is what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. He said every good act, it is a form of charity. It's not all about money. There are so many who don't have money to give as sadaqa. But every good act that you do, it is considered sadaqa. We, we emphasize so much on the giving of charity. And sometimes in a community, most of the people do not have to give in terms of wealth, in terms of money. But we, we, fail, we fail sometimes to remind them that sadaqa, it's not only in the giving of money, but it's also in the giving of what Allah has bestowed upon you. Whatever Allah has given to you, and you use it to aid others, it is considered sadaqa. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, ma min muslim yaghrisu gharsan illa kana ma ukila minhu lahu sadaqa وَمَا سُرِقَ مِنْهُ لَهُ صَدَقَةً وَلَا يَرْزَقُ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا كَانَ لَهُ صَدَقَةً The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that there is no Muslim who plants a tree and many people came from different parts of the world and that was a very common thing, that people would plant trees. You know, right now, there, there are charitable organizations, national charitable organizations in this country that collects money to plant trees in some of these countries. And, and they say that, you know, our target is to plant a million trees a couple hundred thousands of trees in, in different parts of the world. It, it is very significant. Listen to what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. He said, there is no Muslim who plants a tree. And the tree has fruits. Whatever is eaten from it, it is a sadaqah for him. Whatever is stolen from it, 
and sometimes people steal, even though the man has done an act that is wrong, because of you planting that tree, whatever is being stolen from it, it is still a sadaqah for you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and whatever is lost from it, you still have that sadaqah, you still have that charity. In, in this country, you see, also there is that campaign to plant trees. It, it can be a form of uh, shelter for people. It may never bear fruits. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, again, like we started, don't look at anything good as being insignificant. It is something that is being recognized by Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards for it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ittaqun nar walaw bi shakki tamra Protect yourself from the fire of hell even by giving away of half piece of date. Half piece of date. Look how insignificant that is. But the Prophet ﷺ is saying that you're helping someone. You're bringing sustenance to someone. And so that is a means of protecting yourselves from the fire of hell. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reminds us that in terms of our ibadat, our worship. And I'll just share this one with you. Sometimes we do it and we don't really understand its significance. We make wudu for prayers. And there are those who think that it's all about the washing of our hands and our face and the wiping of certain parts and the, the washing of our feet so that we purify ourselves. But, but there is also a, a, an internal purification. It, it is not just external. Because when we talk about purification, we talk about purification, tahara badaniya, wa tahara ruhiya. We, we, we talk about uh, uh, bodily purification and purification of the soul, or external as well as internal purification. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that when you wash your face for making of wudu ablution, it is not the mere fact of cleaning your face, the external, you know, part of your face, but whatever this, these eyes have seen in terms of anything that may be unlawful, you're washing that away. Whatever this tongue has said when you're washing the mouth, Whatever this tongue has said as being, you know, the derogatory or you backbited or you slandered, you're trying to purify the tongue. And when we wash our hands, whatever evil it has touched, wrong it has done, it's a form of purifying ourselves from that wrong. 
And when we, when we wash our feet, it's a form of purification also. We are purifying ourselves from the places that these feet might have taken us, wrong places, evil places. And, and, and so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, in the washing of these different parts of the body, there is sadaqah. There is charity. And, and so that is a means of doing good. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, again with regards to our ibadat, he says, Yusbihu ala kulli sulama min ahadikum sadaqa. That every morning you wake up, every single joint of your body is requesting sadaqa from you. Even if you know it or you don't know it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this is the, the natural thing. That when you wake up in the morning, every limb, every part of the body is requesting sadaqah from you. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَكُلُّ تَسْبِيحَةٍ sadaqa, وَكُلُّ تَحْمِيدَةٍ sadaqa." وَكُلُّ تَحْلِيلَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَكُلُّ تَكْبِيرَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, So, every tasbih that you make, you say, Subhanallah. And every time you say, Alhamdulillah. And every time you say, La ilaha illallah. And every time you say, Allahu Akbar. It is sadaqa. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam continued, Wa amru bil ma'roof sadaqa. Wa nahyu anil munkar sadaqa. He says that enjoining right, it is sadaqa. Forbidding wrong, it is sadaqa. So you see something that you can encourage people to do with regards to it. This is a good thing. You encourage them. It is sadaqah. You see someone doing something wrong. You try to move them away from that wrong thing. It is sadaqah. And so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is constantly reminding us that there are different ways, different means of doing good things. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told his companions, Uridat alayya a'malu ummati hasanuha wa sayyi'uha I was shown the deeds of my ummah the good ones and the evil ones and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said fa wajadtu fi majal mahasin a'maliha he said, with regards to the good deeds that I was shown, is that the removal of anything that inconveniences other people. Very simple. Anything that you find that is harmful to others will bring some inconvenience to them the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying i was shown that this is among 
the good or the hasanat of my ummah. And then he said with regards to the ones that are not good, that I was shown, for example, in those days, and maybe it still happens today, people would spit on the floor and they would not cover it. And so it produced, it, uh, you know, in some way it is some of inconvenience to others. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, with regards to the, with, with regards to the amal or the deeds that are not good, I was shown this deed where people would spit on the floor and they would not cover it. Cleanliness. At tahara shatrul iman. Cleanliness is half of faith. This is what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we, we are, are living in a world in which there are so many opportunities for the doing of good. In the, these opportunities, it is not with regards to ourselves. It was regards to doing good for others. There, there are people all over the world. They see something, sometimes they start very small. Children need books. They have seen that they can make a difference. And from collecting one book and two books and three books, they have now made it a worldwide thing where they are sending books to children in all parts of the world. You can start off with something very simple and you can make differences in the lives of people. How many books we throw away? How, how much food we throw away every single day? There are those who said, no, we are not going to waste this food. Maybe we can take it to the shelter. It, it, it requires some sacrifice. Of course, you have to call the shelter, make sure that they will take it, uh, how they will take it, uh, you know, how it needs to be presented, uh, and then you will have to take it there yourselves. So there, there are so many different ways of doing good. It is not just taking out that money and handing it to the masjid or to an organization. We can make differences in the lives of people, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. We can make a difference in our own lives in, in terms of uh, the, the ibadat or the things that we do, just the basic things. If we constantly do it, it brings that reward, tremendous rewards for us. Allah, he says in the Quran, And whoever does an atom weight of good, he will certainly see it. So my reminder to you here today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that we have multitudes of opportunities to really engage in the doing of good. Let us seek out these methods, these means of doing good things and be of benefit to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us for all the good deeds that we have put forth. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, show us the way to, to innovate, to invent uh, ways of doing good things. 
because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man sanna sunnatan hasana falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha ila yawm al qiyamah. He who innovates, invents a, 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 a way of doing good, that he will have the reward for it and the reward of those who follow him in doing that good until the day of judgment. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter and that he saves us from the torment of hellfire. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمن المؤمنات من كل ذنب فاستغفرون إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran من عمل صالحا فلنفسه he who does good it is for the benefit of his own self. So yes, you will do good and others will benefit from it. You do something for your brother and your brother benefits. You do something for your sister, you do something for the community, the community benefits. But the origin is the benefit to yourself. Because whatever you do for others, it also brings a benefit for you. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Quran. That if you do good, you do it for your own selves. It will be of tremendous benefit for you both in this world and in the world hereafter. Our good deeds make our scale of good deeds heavier on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, in ahsantum ahsantum li anfusikum. If you do good, you do good for your own selves, your own souls. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, look for opportunities make a difference in the lives of people this life of ours it's all about looking at the jama'ah looking at people and not only looking at ourselves if we leave people alone and do not concern ourselves with them, we are helping in some way for them to go over the edge or for them to be involved in transgression, going against the boundaries or the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslims have a great responsibility and we are given a, 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 an opportunity to make a difference. I, I've been looking over the last uh, couple of weeks at what others are doing people of other faith and the difference that they're making in the lives of other people. You know what? When they make that difference in terms of the economics, in terms of uh, the material things, they also make a difference in the, the belief and the, the the deen of those people in terms of what they will accept. 
Can you imagine someone of another faith? You, you, you are a pauper. You don't have money. You don't have clothing. You don't have shelter. You don't have anything. And you're suffering. And people are pouring in their resources and giving it to you. And you are seeing that humanitarian part of their lives, that there are people who are willing to help. And when you look at them, this is a man of a different faith. He's not a Muslim like me. It does have an effect, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. It does play with your, your, your thinking or, 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 or your faith. This is, this is what your faith teaches you. And you can make such a difference in my life. Not everyone has that strong faith. Not everyone has that strong belief and they will stay in line. And so many Muslims, because of what they, they received from others, people of other faith, it had an influence on them and so they changed their faith. And, and who is to be blamed? Muslims, because we are wealthy and we have resources. And we have not come to the aid of people who need our wealth and our resources. Very simple things. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, again, look at ways of how you can help. Perhaps with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the guidance of Allah, you will have people come into the fold of Islam. And even if they don't accept Islam, they will understand what Muslims really represent. And this is how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions, they spread the message of Islam. There were people who were very charitable, not only with their wealth, but charitable with everything that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave bestowed upon them. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and help us to be of help to others. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open up our hearts and, and guide us so that we can be a sort of a difference to other people with regards to how they they live their lives. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for good in this world and good in the world hereafter and to save us from the torment of hellfire. لَقَدْ أَمَرْنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِينَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللَّهُمَّ صَلِّ وَسَلِّمْ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِكَ وَرَسُولِكَ مُحَمَّدٍ وأرضى الله من خلفائه على الباء أبي بكر وأمر وأثمان وعلي ونستة الباقين المبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسنة لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي ذكم لكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله لا نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أقم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر